Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to another monthly market report. As has been the case for a while now, it's been another wild ride, but there is some data to indicate that the market is taking a breath a little, which might be a good thing. Let's start off with the North Kona market. For residential properties, we saw 51 sales in June. That was down just one from May. However, our median price was down nearly $70,000 from the month before to $880,000. That's something to keep an eye on for a little while. The condo market closed with 64 sales, which was up just two from the month before, with a median price of $404,000, up $31,500. In South Kohala, the market saw 30 houses sold, which was down four from May, and a healthy median price of $828,500. Now, that's down a lot from the previous month, but remember, May was a month that had some really crazy sales and a median price of over $1 million, and that was totally an outlier. The South Kohala condo market had 35 sales, which was down four, and a median price of $824,000, which was significantly higher than May, up $123,500. Looking at some of the charts that we've been tracking for a while, our combined North Kona, South Kohala residential chart shows that we had a median price increase back to our median price of three months ago. We can see that the median price does have some short terms ups and downs, so we'll keep an eye on this. There are a couple interesting things on this chart to me. First, if we look at the sales in yellow, those are the sales that are under $1.5 million. We see these numbers go up and down, of course, uh, but we do not see a ton of volatility. The lowest number of sales in any month in the last 12 months was 52 sales, and the most was 90, so it's less than double the lowest number. Now, compare that to the numbers that we see in gray. That's the market over 1.5 million. We have seen between eight and 29 sales in different months. That market seems to have a lot more growth, but also has a lot more volatility. The second thing to notice is that the overall unit sold has decreased for two consecutive months now, and that's the first time that's happened since May of 2020. That's something to keep an eye on. Now let's take a look at the condo chart. Last month I mentioned that we should keep an eye on the dip that we saw. Well, it looks like that was a small blip, but we're exactly where we were two months ago now. I do think we do have enough data here to say that there appears to be a flattening trend in the condo median price. We've been averaging over 100 sales per month for the last six months. So we have a pretty good amount of data here. And in those six months, we've seen prices go from $493,500 up to $515,000, which is an increase of 4.3% over that time. And if you annualize that out, that's an increase of 8.6% a year. Now, that's a pretty good rate of return. And even at that rate, it's still what we would probably call unsustainable over the long haul. But it's really important to note, this is nowhere near the crazy 20% growth market that some people think we are still in. We've already had that. Now we're in a more flat phase and we're stabilizing. So it's important to know where we are in the market right now. All that to say that we may be nearing the end of this growth phase for condos and we could be entering a long sustainable phase soon. We're gonna to have to keep looking at the data. Looking at this chart, we can also see that just like the residential market, we've had now two consecutive months of decreases in units sold for the first time since May of 2020. If we see this for a third month in both categories, I think we can start calling an end to this bull run and start thinking about the long-term pricing sustainability and what that might look like in the months ahead. And finally, let's check in with that crazy luxury market chart that I showed you guys last month. Uh, believe it or not, we actually saw the 90th percentile sale go up again, uh, but thankfully at a much more stabilized rate. We're gonna go ahead and keep an eye on this to see if it settles back to earth here in the next few months. We can look and see that recently we have had fewer sales over 1.5 million. Those, those gray sections that we have there. So we might see this come down. Again, these numbers that I'm using are based on a 90-day window. We have a couple of interesting news items that you guys might want to know about. First of all, if all goes well, on July 26th, the County of Hawaii will start their paperless permitting process. I'm really excited about this. This is expected to make the permitting process faster and more efficient. This system is supposed to allow people from multiple departments to work on the same permit at the same time instead of the way they used to do it, which was physically having a file and having it go from one person in one department, walked over to another person in another department. When they were done, 
after they were on vacation or who knows what, they would give it to the next person and so on. I'm really excited to see how this works out. I'm really hopeful that this will improve the permitting process. Uh, that has so much to do with the delay in construction and adding to the construction costs here in Hawaii. So this is really a big deal. Uh, pay attention to that. I, there could be some hiccups, but overall, this is a move in the right direction. In other construction-related news, lumber prices dropped more than 40% in June, which is the biggest monthly drop they have on record going all the way back to 1978. This is good news not only for those building homes right now, because it also indicates that some of the inflation that we were seeing may be short-lived. There's this ongoing debate out there right now as to whether or not inflation is being brought about because of different supply chain inefficiencies due to what's been going on over the last year. The other side of the argument is that this is real inflation and it needs to be addressed with interest rate adjustments. Obviously that has a big impact on people borrowing to buy homes, so it's something that we really keep a pretty close eye on. If you're wanting to take a look at where things are going in the home market, one of the best things that you can keep an eye on is the weekly mortgage demand. Now, right now we're seeing a trend towards a weakening of that demand, and that indicates that fewer people may be looking to buy. In the last two weeks, we've seen decreases of 1.8% and 7% off the previous week. And overall, new home mortgage applications are 14% lower than they were a year ago. According to Joe Can of the Mortgage Bankers Association, he's the Associate Vice President of Economic and Industry Forecasting, swift home price growth across much of the country driven by inefficient supply is weighing on the purchase market and is pushing average loan amounts higher. So that would seem to indicate that things may be starting to slow down. However, at the same time, home builder Taylor Morrison, CEO Cheryl Palmer, said that, quote, it's going to be very difficult for us to make up the shortage deficit that we've been building up for more than a decade now, and that the U.S. housing shortage will be around for years to come. To me, this indicates that we still have a supply problem, which usually means higher prices. If you're wondering what prices are on homes that we have here in Hawaii, take a look at the playlist that I have over here to the left. I'll see you over there. Thanks a lot, everyone.